And to all you people back in the Shire, turn your porch lights off because we're coming home with a trophy. Hey there, welcome to Sharkcast Pod, a podcast dedicated to the greatest sporting club in the history of the world, the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. This is a match preview. We are playing the West Tigers. This episode will be a short, sharp one based around the preview of the episode with a bit of mail to get through as well. As always, brought to you by Dyson Logistics, the Royal Motor Yacht Club in Port Hacking, and Jason Hawes at Crips and Crips Real Estate. Please go look for them online if you need any further information about those three wonderful companies. But I can tell you from personal use, they are highly regarded. You need to seek them out if that's what you're after, whether it's logistical uh, sending of things, whether it is somewhere to wine, dine, entertain, watch footy, or whether it is something to do with real estate. Those three various companies will help you out. As always, we are on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube. You can subscribe to all of those. We are also on all these podcast apps, of course. You can you can uh, subscribe there and our episodes will appear automatically when they're ready. We also have some merch at rugbyleaguemerch.com and you'll find us pretty easily on that page. Before we hit the preview, let's get through a bit of mail that's uh, been sent through since the last episode and first up we have ted who's a long time regular listener i uh, love the work you put in every week love the community of sharks fans you introduced me to through your podcast i may have been to maybe 15 to 20 sharks games in my life including the grand final because i don't live near the shire and don't like to travel i watch every minute of every game And being a Sharks fan is a huge part of my life. I don't watch TV or listen to music, so when you go on a musical talk, most of the time I zone out. But I appreciate it's a big part of your life, so I understand why it comes up so much. I could listen to a Dylan Wright weekly update podcast purely because he's a diehard like us. I actually have him on at the moment, and the man's got a voice. Good luck, Dylan, for the future. So that's really kind of you to say, Ted. I know that uh, we try and keep the music stuff to a minimum but it is a big part of my life as well as a number of the other uh, co-hosts so and our listeners too so we're not shy about that but obviously it's a sharks podcast first and foremost give dylan some support give him a shout out if you're able to send a text through on sunday night i'm sure it'd be a massive help to him either way it's looking like a really good healthy musical working career for dylan Wright coming up based on his time at Australian Idol it's propelled him to a very different level to where he was at and I know he's pretty happy with that Uh, I think he still wants to take it all out but if he doesn't uh, I I would imagine a whole bunch of people on that show are going to be fine from here on in with hard work of course Uh, Ted says my input on the team I'm always an optimist like yourself when it comes to the team now that's interesting Ted I would not call myself that I know everyone else calls me that that's your opinion I appreciate it I have had players I don't like in our jersey and players I don't think deserve to call themselves a shark. Since Fitzgibbon has been coach, I don't think I could say a negative word about the club, team, players, etc. I'm so happy to see our team is stuck together and built as a group. Something that I heard is stuck with me. Games are not won on paper, they're won on grass. We have a great team, but there are better teams on paper in the comp. We don't seem to be bothered by that. Our opening two games are a small sample size to go off but you can see the boys are on the same page and want success. I know over the past couple of years we've struggled against the top eight sides, but this year feels different. We seem to have much more belief, which goes a lot further than reputation. I'm looking forward to this year and confident we'll be attending another grand final. Whoa, Ted. Uh, You also give a shout out to our friend Dan, who you met at a concert, and I've passed on his details, Ted. So I appreciate all of that, and I'm happy that you're happy you're a Sharks fan especially right now. And thanks so much for your support. Please don't ever be a stranger. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Anthony. And Anthony says, love the show. Listening to the review of the last game, I recalled we saw something very different at halftime. The Jump Around song played with dancers entering some of the stands dressed in white. I believe they were trying to get a US college style jump around going like the Wisconsin Badgers do. 
interesting to see if this continues at future home games and if we start to pick it up. That's from Corbs. Well, I didn't see that, but I have heard about that happening at the game, and it is obviously a very much American influence thing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how our fans take to it. I, I, I think it's aimed at a younger kind of crowd, so I hope they're targeting the right part of the field. Let's keep an eye on that. Thanks so much for pointing out, Anthony. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the uh, support for the show. Uh, our old friend Jason has been in touch. When I say old, I mean he's been listening for a long time. And I have received your message loud and clear. I'll be back in touch with you when I can, Jason. But just want to give you a shout out. Sean's been in touch. Now I'm going to start with the last bit that he says. He says, there seems to be a few Sean's writing in. If it's easier, you can refer to me as Sharks to Sean on my Instagram handle. Uh, Sharks to Sean, I'm happy to refer to you as that, but you're going to have to call yourself that because I will never remember that. But I appreciate you pointing out the difference. And yeah, as you've signed off, Sharks to Sean, let's go with that. You said, number one, against the dogs, noted that Hines gave his left side a blast for not running up in support at one point. Also gave a gobble to Blake Braley for not getting the ball or the call quicker to him for the drop goal. This is great to see. He's stepping up to demand plays and getting cranky about it. It's only a good thing. I only saw one of those incidents. I agree. I think as long as he does it in a fair and spirited way, there's no negativity involved. I think that he's just demanding the ball at different times. And if he thinks that's going to get us across the line, then I'm all for it. It's a very tight-knit group, and I would very much like to point out that things like that would not be taken personally on the field it's just emotion and a leader speaking out Uh, the game was more entertaining on tv than live at the ground watching live i was frustrated at the inability to nail territory dogs are so subpar and even blake should have had the tempo of the game under control against a lesser opposition we can't be playing that way against a team like the panthers you also say it's not just the defensive structures that have improved, it's the physicality. The centers and back three in particular are more aggressive with their defense. Jesse looks like a man possessed. They look bigger on the field. I'm not sure if they've bulked up, but it's very impressive. I also would like to uh, point that out, Sean, and agree with you, that they're playing with a physicality we haven't seen for a few years, and I really love it. I think that if they can maintain that, it'll take them a long way. You say Toby is a meat and potatoes hard runner and it suits him. Seems like he's a specific role with instructions and he's nailing it. Trindle on Fox today said, words to the effect of all I have to do is make my tackles. Clearly this is the mantra and long may it happen. Defense is of course referred to as D. Maybe it should be G and D for the Sharks for grit and defense. Keep up the good work. Sharks to Sean, thank you so much for your wise words. Agree with all that. Not much more I can add to it, but... uh, You are watching the game very closely, and I appreciate that. Uh, Tate has been in touch, and not with some good news. He had a pretty unhappy time down at Shark Park on Friday, and he sent me a, I guess, a a post he did on his social media, and it says, I'm never going back to Shark Park. I've given it a few days for the dust to settle and to calm down, but I'm content with my decision. $42 $42 for GA standing on a hill ticket. Arguably the worst parking situation of any stadium in Australia. 25 minute bar line to be told two beers per person because it's now half time. It's only half time because your service was so slow. Worst food and beverage offerings. Get with the times of 2024. Two tiny big screens. 1995 sound system doesn't cut the mustard. Access out of the stadium after the game is actually unsafe. Made worse by security trying to force you off the hill into the rolling crowd, even with the baby being carried on a chest. And that's from Tate. Uh, Tate, that's really, really disappointing that that was your experience. Uh, I, there's some things I can touch on, some I won't. But uh, the $42 for the GA standing, I'm not sure how that works. Um, and I'm sure there's different prices out there if you're a member, if you buy a bunch in bulk, etc., etc. But 42 bucks, I mean, it seems standard, whether that's right or wrong. That's for you to decide. It, it, I agree, it seems excessive, but uh, we don't make up these prices, unfortunately. As far as the parking goes, I mean, the club did offer long-term members the chance to take up some parking in the new car park for the uh, the new complex next door so that's up and running and there was the option to park there 
for a lot of members. I guess I'm a very long-term member, like almost 25 years. I'm assuming that's long-term, but I know people who are a bit less than that, you know, in the five-year bracket, and they got the same email. So there, there was an option there for a lot of people to take that up. Aside from that, there is um, just street parking around, and it is a bit of a hike, but it's nothing crazy compared to other stadiums. I know if you look at the new Parramatta Stadium, of course, that's got parking in-house if you pre-book in the Leeds clubs nearby. But I think saying it's the worst parking situation in Australia might be dramatic. I, I don't know. As a local with the benefit knowledge of being local, uh, I, I do know of places where you can park for free and it's not the longest walk. So anytime you want to be in touch about that kind of thing, and it goes for anyone, if you want hint, hints and tips, please get in touch and I'll tell you what I know. Uh, the bar lines were not great and we acknowledge that on the show. We need to see what's going to happen in round two. The club is aware of it. Usually it is a round one issue i don't know why can't explain that the two beers per person halftime thing is a legality with the local licensing people it's not a sharks thing i understand your argument you've been in line you're waiting and now it's halftime i understand that Uh, as far as offering of the food and beverage uh, i know with the beverage again it comes down to some licensing issues so you won't be getting too many boutique beers in there the food i think has come a long way compared to the old days there are different for want of a better word, food trucks. There's the Mexican place. There's there's different things there, which I think can appeal to a lot of people, whether you want to stand there and wait in line. It's a different matter. Uh, so saying it's the worst and getting with the times, I think they're slowly getting there. I understand what you're saying. And I, if you listen to the show, my friend Kieran was fortunate enough to get me some food. He had to line up for a while and he came back with a Pluto pup and a bucket. Of, what did he come back with? Pluto pup and some nuggets and chips and that was all that was left so I experienced it I hear you the club's aware of it the screen situation's interesting isn't it like we need to upgrade that I don't know how it happens aside from some money from somewhere uh the screens are not good and I'm someone who is very poorly sighted poor vision and I'm with you there but it's money so maybe maybe I don't know maybe there's a change coming hopefully Uh, The sound system, I would love to say, is going to change, but it's been like that for a long time. And you know that on this show, we've begged people in charge to do something about it. Nothing's really happened. So I kind of lost the words there. Uh, As far as access out of the stadium, you're saying it's unsafe, especially with with the baby. Uh, I would just sort of, I know it's hard and I'm saying it in hindsight and I wasn't there to experience it in that position you were in. But I would just say, hold your ground and explain that you're not moving until it's safe and point out that uh, it's an issue. Try and find a cop, try and find a club employee uh, if you're not happy with the security decision. Uh, I know it's hard to sometimes debate with those people, but uh, I'm just trying to give you some some insight into a different way to approach it so we can get you back to the ground, Tate, because we want you to come back. And uh, I'm sure the club would think the same. And again, you know what you need to do? You need to send this to the club. I'm happy that you sent it to me and I'll happily read it out. The club needs to hear this. And we have people at the club that listen to the show, but you need to send it direct because then the message gets across. Super appreciate you being in touch, Tate, and I hope you change your mind about about not going back. Steve has been in touch and he has sent me a photo. I'm ashamed to say I don't know where you are. If you're in Cronulla, that'll be very funny. But you're wearing a Shark Cast t-shirt. That looks amazing. You got that from Rugby League merch. You just got them for the classic Shark Cast logo. Nice and big in the center of a black t-shirt. Uh, and you're drinking some Masahi. So uh, happy birthday to you, I believe. And I'll respond to the rest of your message privately. So I think that's all the mail that's come in since the last episode. Appreciate everyone being in touch. And we do have a game to preview And that is Saturday night against the West Tigers. It's at Leichhardt Oval. It's a 7.35 kickoff. Uh, I would grab your tickets if it's not already sold out. Like us, I believe there's a limited capacity there. And if you're heading out there, try and do it with some time to spare because it gets pretty congested there. I know a lot of you have already been, but if you haven't been, haven't been for a while, uh, Leichhardt gets super congested. It's hard to park. Speaking of parking, to Tate, it's hard to park around like that. And uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be a fun one because they're 
the Tigers lift at Leichhardt and their fans lift and it's it's a new era for them with Benji in charge and they really want to impress and they weren't too good last week but it's a new week and anything goes. Sharks team named 1-7 to seven, as you would imagine. Toby holds the prop spot with Gafusi. Big Jack Williams comes in for Britain Nicker who suspended so Jack Williams will start the game in 11. Onto the bench will be Billy Burns making his Shark debut and he will cover for Jack Williams. So the bench is Dale Finucane, Royce Hunt, Billy Burns, and tall Tom Hazelson. A pretty big bench still. Uh, at the moment, 18th man is Cal Iro. Big Tooks, Atkinson, Stone Street, and Beryl also hanging around. Of course, we won't know the final lineup until 6.35 on Saturday night, but I'm led to believe that Jack will start and Billy will come off the bench. Should that change, that is different to what I've heard at the moment. Tigers have named a slightly different team from last week. They've got a... A new halfback in Aiden Caesar, who came off the bench. He's he's going to be starting for them. He's a very experienced halfback. Justin Olam will play his first game for the Tigers as well. Um, long-time Melbourne Storm centre. Can do some damage, so let's not take him lightly. He'll be replacing the injured Stafford Toa. Historically, looking at the game, uh, West Tigers haven't been around forever. And we've played 36 games. Pretty even. They've won 18, we've won 17 with one draw. They did dominate us for a while, and it was hard to beat the West Tigers, particularly with the new coach uh, running around like a crazy, uh, talented attacking machine that he was. But since 2015, we've won 10 of the past 11 games, including each of the past four. Over the last 11 games, we've had a great record, and we've scored almost... 150 more points than them as well in total in those uh, 11 games. So looking to keep that going. Uh, all, the, all of the past four games have been decided by 24 points or more. We're hoping that it'll be a big win for us. Uh, we definitely don't want them to win by 24 points or more. We don't want them to win at all. We last played at Leichhardt in 2019. We've won the past two there. But prior to that, Tigers won five of the opening seven clashes between the teams since the merger of West and Balmain. It's not a great ground for us, but recent success there, which is fantastic. West Tigers did not start well last week. Overall, going back to last year, they've had one win from the past 14 games, a round 25 one-point win over the Dolphins. There's no reason why we should be losing this game. They did have a very, very, very big win last year. Their biggest ever win at Leichhardt in round 12. 66-18, a memorable win over the Cowboys. Sharks come into the game with really good form. We've won three of our past four and six of our past eight going back to last year. I love this one. The 18 points we've conceded in two games. They've come inside the opening 20 minutes on a couple occasions against 12 men. If we fix up that start to the, we're in really good shape. Even if we don't, we can still win those games. That's where the points have been conceded this year. So that's very interesting. We had some success last year away from Shark Park. Nothing amazing, but we won nine of 15 games. So so I know a lot of you have been into me about this one during the week. And uh, we've not started a season 3-0 and since 2002. That first of two memorable, for different reasons, years that Chris Anderson took over. We missed the finals twice from the six previous times we were 3-0. That was in 1982 and 1990. We made the grand final in 78 and 97. And in 99, we finished minor premiers after three wins from three games. So let's win. Let's see what happens. The odds are getting better the more you win, which is fantastic. Defense has been really strong. We've conceded 13 points or less in the past four games. Haven't done that for a long time. So let's keep defending and you'll win the game with your defense. Now, Sione Katoa likes scoring tries against the Tigers. He's got seven in his past three. Billy Burns will make his debut for the Sharks, probably from the bench. He debuted for Penrith in 2019. He played 12 games over two years for them. He then went to the Dastardly Dragons and he played 29 matches. Big Jack Williams will play just his fourth match starting in the second row from what is going to be his 102nd game. 
Kava, Britain, Nicaro, who's suspended. So it's just his fourth time starting in the second row. He's played more when he's come on from the bench, but starting, this will be his fourth match. I really think this game is there for us to be winning it, and I'm not saying that with disrespect to the Tigers. I'm saying that with respect to how well we've started the year, and even to a large degree how well we finished the year last year. It's just continued on. I know we didn't get the win against the Roosters, but played well in the final sort of five or six games with that uh, new left edge of Trindle and now Teague is back and it looks a lot more secure defensively and it looks good in attack as well. I do think we just got to keep playing the way we have been defense orientated, minimize the errors, get three sets, kick the way Nico and Trindle have been doing, chase it and we're on our way. It sounds simple but that's just how it works and I'd be targeting both sides of the field. I know Junior Tupo has let in a bunch of tries for the Tigers in the past year. Charlie Staines is not a great defender either. And I think I'd really be using our wingers and our, our edge attack to to go about winning the game. Do the hard stuff in the middle and then you've got left and right to go to. Keep an eye out for Jareem Buller, their fullback. He's young and raw, but he set up a bunch of tries in his uh, small amount of games last year for them. The halves are competent. Lachlan Galvin is very raw and green, and on debut last week, he looked pretty good, and he's only going to get better, and Aiden Caesar is a veteran, just very solid in what he does. I'm not particularly phased by him, but he'll go, he'll go out there and do a job. Their forward pack is sneaky okay. Uh, Big Stefano and David Clemmer are more than competent props. You know, they would not look out of place in other teams. And Api Karasai is pretty much the lifeblood of the team at Hooker. Isaiah Papalehi is, has been good historically. Like, I don't know what sort of form he's in at the moment, but I don't know how I'd describe it the last year or so, but he's a good player. Uh, John Bateman is skillful and he will niggle the heck out of all of us. So we need to hold that composure like we did against the Bulldogs. And I believe we can. Just let him go for it. Let him get himself into some trouble. So that's the uh, the word on the game this week. Hope you enjoy it wherever you watch it, whether you're at the game, whether you're watching on TV, on Fox Sports, or whether you're listening to it on the radio or overseas on the app, on a stream, however you're doing it. Hope you enjoy it. Hope we get the win. Let's be 3-0 and the next time we speak. Get in touch with us, sharkcastpot at gmail.com. We are on all the socials, pretty much. You can DM us and we'll find you. And yeah, if you feel inclined, please subscribe to anything you're not subscribed to. If you subscribe to our YouTube page, it'll help. If you subscribe to the Facebook, the X, whatever. And most importantly, please just keep spreading the word, whether it's on your social media or verbally. Grab your neighbor's phone, and who's a Sharks fan, and just show them how to use the podcast app and tell them this one might be for them. Or if you know someone out there who's not listening to the show, uh, just spread the word and just say this might be for you if it's not we all apologize because uh the best thing that you can do for our podcast is just keep spreading the word the more listeners the better uh we're doing really well and i'm not tooting my own horn i'm just saying like this isn't a plea or a cry for help or things are falling apart it's all going really well stronger than ever but we got to keep building so that's what this year's about is building our audience and more importantly entertaining the audience that we have Thanks so much for your time. We'll talk to you soon. Up, up, Cronulla. Shut up,